Well, hello YouTube, it's me Fortmaster, and welcome back to another Kutzka's Art video. And the second most deadliest virus on Earth. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hi, future editing Fortmaster here. Uh, since I recorded this reaction, uh, Kutzka's Art has changed the title of the video once again. It is now how this bizarre virus killed 500 million people. Now back onto the original recording. No, is tuberculosis a, a virus or a bacteria? Tuberculosis is a bacteria, never mind. But, uh, second most. So I know tuberculosis is at least, I remember watching Hank Green and he, he was doing a video talking about how like uh, tuberculosis has always been with humanity or for a very long time because they found it in like Neanderthals and various other like pre-human species, uh, like in their uh, fossil remains. So it can't be tuberculosis, or could it be? I don't know. I have no idea what this could be talking about. I'm genuinely curious. The the second most. I mean, I'm and, and again, I'm pretty sure this is a case of um, Kurtzkes are having changed the title because that's not what it was called before. <laughs> At least I'm pretty not. I'm pretty sure it's not. I think it had something to do with cows or something. I I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will be leading to my newest Let's Play of the day. And yeah, uh, let's get this thing started then, shall we? Few of the monsters that evolution created have been so successful at hurting us as the variola virus. Responsible Real? for smallpox. Oh. The carnage it caused was so terrible and merciless that it compelled humankind for the first time to act truly globally. It was one of the greatest wins of our species over the ancient powers of nature, all made possible by cows. Smallpox, thank cowpox for that. And actually, that was the whole thing. Like, I've heard, like, my uh, my grandmother um, in Lithuania, she lived on a farm. That's how she vaccinated herself. Cows on the farm got cowpox, and it did the old-fashioned way of scraping some of the pus off, cutting, and then rubbing the pus in the wound. Self-vaccination. <laughs> and you have these idiots nowadays that believe uh, vaccines cause autism. As a person with Asperger's, I find that really insulting every time i hear that i can't help but think man you know what i wish that was true just because then there'd be more people like me and they wouldn't be so stupid it's not even 30 seconds of the video i've already worked myself up i'm sorry variola is a virus a tiny machine that only seeks to reproduce itself yep Evidence of it has been found in Egyptian mummies and in writing from India and China as old as 3,000 years. 1,300 years ago, smallpox killed up to a third of Japan's population. By the 1600s, it was one of the major causes of death worldwide. In late 18th century Europe, it killed 400,000 a year. Every third person who went blind did so because of this virus. Jeez. Even in the 20th century, a hot second ago in history, it still killed at least 300 million people. Smallpox is an abusive monster that returns over and over and over again, killing, maiming, and disrupting societies. How could variola be so incredibly deadly for so long, and how could we have forgotten its horror so quickly? Because people are idiots. Yeah, I once heard a story, and yes, it was on Reddit, but this person had an anti-vaxxer in their family, and they said, oh, and they were doing all and they were doing all the, the it was like, oh, it's not real. It's like nobody's ever had it and stuff like that. And the grandmother or grandfather uh, like looked at them and says, your uncle caught it. That's why he's like, oh God, what was it blind or something? That's it was, it, it was one of the side effects of smallpox um, of if you survive it. I'm forgetting what it was. It's been a while since I listened to it. Ah, uh, in 2023, there are only two laboratories left where the living virus is officially stored for research in Kotsova, Russia, and Atlanta, USA. Which is certainly a good idea because what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, Let's who say knows? That through an unfortunate series of events, the virus got out and you got infected. What would happen to you? Well, I've been vaccinated. Uh, actually, I had my booster shot for it just at the beginning of this year, so I'm good. <laughs> how smallpox came. Wait, was it a booster for smallpox? Or I know I got a booster for a bunch of stuff at the beginning of the year. 
Variola is highly infectious and catches a ride in small droplets you breathe in. Immediately, it begins to infect like the a cells lot of that things. line your throat and starts killing them to cause chaos. Why? To trick your body into giving it a lift. Whenever cells in your body die a violent death, your immune cells immediately stream to the site of infection to help out. In this case, that backfires horribly. As immune cells begin cleaning up dead cells, eating viruses and killing infected cells, variola infects a crucial cell of your immune system, your dendritic cells. Uh. Intelligent cells that gather information and leave the battlefield to get help. They enter your lymphatic system, a highway network that spans your entire body and connects hundreds of immune bases. In these bases, your heavy defenses are activated and should be the last place an enemy would want to invade, but Variola wants to get here. For about 12 days, the virus quietly infects civilian and immune cells, jumping from cell to cell, infecting more and more of them. At some point, a critical threshold is reached and Variola starts its attack for real. Millions of viruses use the lymphatic highway to spill into your blood and organs, infecting your whole body. Suddenly, variola is everywhere. But despite Great. this global attack, your adaptive immune system is struggling to wake up. Your immune cells look for and use critical transmitters called interferons to mobilize the body against viruses. Interferons, as the name suggests, interfere, significantly slowing down virus infections but also quickly activating millions of antivirus weapons. Guessing the interferons but have been Vario turned off. Is able to deactivate interferons, which stuns the antivirus side of your defense system. Uh... Other systems would usually help, like the complement system, a sort of mobile minefield that can destroy viruses. But Variola manages to shut this down too. And so with little resistance, Variola spreads everywhere and infects billions of your cells all over your body. Among the infected are your capillaries, the smallest blood vessels in your body, which die in great numbers. All this death activates an immune cell that you really don't need right now, but that's attracted by death, the neutrophil. Normally neutrophil. an efficient killer of invaders great and small, it's not very effective against smallpox. And even worse, neutrophils fight by vomiting deadly chemicals, which kills even more of your cells. On top of that, they order inflammation, fluids streaming from your blood vessels into your tissue. All over your body, as first millions, then billions of your cells die, you get a rash that only gets worse and worse. Pus and cellular junk fills it up as your body swells up with hundreds of lesions all over your skin and inside, even on your organs. I... This stuff is truly terrifying. Just like the fact that you can have a literal war going on in your body, and yet you have this little disease little virus that hijacks it and causes everything to go into chaos. Funny thing is my mom, my, my mom had me late. She's a literal baby boomer. She's like in her seventies at the moment. And on her arm, she has an old scar from the very old version of getting the smallpox vaccines because I've never actually seen it, but apparently it was very violent, violent enough to leave a scar on her arm that's still there. Again, I just I just got a shot. Though for me, my my problem was my veins are always really deep, so I'm um, getting shots, especially when I was a kid, was very painful. <laughs> All filled with billions of variola viruses. Now the critical phase begins. As you fight for survival, you burn up in a high fever. Thousands of battlegrounds drain your blood of fluid that streams into your tissue and organs. Blood clotting appears all over your body, while floods of toxins from dead cells build up and can cause organs to fail. Your lungs fill up with fluid, making it harder and harder to breathe. One of two things happens now. Either your immune system wrestles back control, heavy weapons have been dispatched, killing infected cells, cleaning up the thousands of infections one by one, killing variola wherever it can be found so you can slowly begin to recover. The immune yeah. system will forever remember variola, making you immune forever. Or you die overwhelmed by the infection and your immune system's panicked reaction to the body-wide infection. About a third of people who contract smallpox don't survive. And if you survive, you're very likely branded by scars and may even lose your eyesight or hearing. For thousands of years, this- Deafness, that was it. The sto I'm sorry, the, the Reddit story. I, his, his cousin or his uncle was deaf. I'm- Sorry, it's a bit off topic, but I, I just that I had to say that when I remembered it. Terrible disease ravaged the world, leaving death and destruction, traumatized and maimed survivors. Until one day, humanity said, 
enough. Why don't we have smallpox anymore? Because we developed a vaccine. It was widespread and we killed it off everywhere at once. Smallpox is one of the worst diseases humanity has ever known. A murderous, family-destroying, life-ruining monster. There was nothing you could do for the infected, but people noticed that if you survived, you were immune. So out of desperation, they came up with the dangerous practice of variolation. Take scabs from an infected person that had a mild case of smallpox, let them dry out, and grind them to a fine powder. Then blow the powder up the nostril of a patient or scratch their skin with it. If things went well, they only got a mild version of smallpox and gained immunity against the disease. Variolation probably worked because it introduced variola in a part of the body the virus wasn't prepared for, disabling most of its nasty tricks. Yeah, again, that's basically just a very, very early version of inoculation. And because the inoculation was left to dry out, that damaged the virus so it couldn't cause the full disease. Unfortunately, 2-3% to of all patients still died because they got the smallpox or suffered other diseases as a result of treatment. Still, smallpox was such a horrible and to some degree unavoidable disease that people took the risk for themselves and their children. Variolation spread around the globe while variola continued to kill millions. A victory over the virus only became a real possibility when scientists realized that it wasn't necessary to variolate with the real smallpox disease, but much safer to use material from cowpox, a variant that affected, surprise, cows. cows. <laughs> a truly revolutionary step, and only a few years later, this led to one of humankind's most outstanding achievements, vaccinations. The innovation was simple. Instead of using the real virus to train the immune system, use a related virus, cowpox, <laughs> that was like only the cow mild, face. but also gave you immunity. Still, it would take another 200 years, countless individuals fighting the monster where they could, delivering vaccines to the most remote places on Earth. All the while, the disease ravaged on, killing over 300 million people in the 20th century alone. In 1966, mm. the World Health Organization decided that humanity had to come together in a final, major effort. A global smallpox news network based on residents in hotspots was created, tackling local outbreaks of the virus. Cases were encircled, vaccines given, preventing further spread. Smallpox only infects humans, so if we stopped the human transmission chain, we would starve the virus. The last naturally occurring infection was in 1977, and in 1980, just shy of 200 years since the first vaccine was used, smallpox was declared eradicated. Variola, the scourge of humanity, was dead. No more children would be killed by it, no more mothers or brothers or uncles or cousins. It's hard to convey to people around today what an incredible win this was. One of the cruelest, most dangerous monsters that has hunted us for literally millennia was slain by us, apes with pointy needles. Hmm. Today, we live in a time of enlightenment. None of us alive today are haunted by the spectre of smallpox. You mean, you hope? This light is not natural. It was set in the sky by the sheer will of humankind wanting to be safe from the monsters haunting us. But because we live without them, we forget that they ever existed and that they are real. That the diseases might reawaken, or new ones might be brewing in jungles, wet markets or laboratories, ready to strike us once more. We forget what an incredible gift vaccines are and how hard we had to battle to get them. We are still protected by the light, but it's cooling each and every day, and we owe it to those who will come after us to make sure it doesn't go out. We killed one monster. We can do it again. This video was supported. This is, I honestly can't, this is why I honestly cannot, like, understand anti-vaxxer. And to think, this whole thing with anti-vaxxer started with, like, one guy. It's like, that's one of those, that's one of those things that if you had a time machine, would you go back in time to kill him? Ugh. Yeah, but, I mean, with all that out of the way, original video will be linked in the description, like always. Corner video will be linking to my newest Let's Play of the day. And with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if not, and uh, make sure your shots are up to date. Goodbye.